my dear friends, we are about to start this Mass. Today is April 1st. It's the beginning of a new front in this battle against this virus. And as we start this new front, we pray for God's guidance, God's blessings, God's protection. In this Mass, I want to pray for people who are getting discouraged because the battle is becoming more difficult, more uncertain than they had hoped or imagined. That is exactly what the devil wants us to feel, is discouragement, feeling helpless and feeling powerless. So I want to pray for anyone whose heart is right now feeling discouragement. And I pray God to speak courage into your heart. I also want to pray for those who are beginning to feel overly anxious and the anxiety is growing into forms of negativity. Pray that God may keep a positive mindset in your spirit right now because that's exactly what the devil wants you to feel. Become negative, get angry, draw or bring out all that would just turn you inside out so i pray for you too but i continue to pray for all those who are sick especially those in critical care that god may demonstrate his authority and power over this disease because we know our god has power over all things we pray for those who are caring for our sick, our doctors, our nurses, our emergency or EMS workers, our police, our mm -hmm. military. We pray for everyone out there, those in um, our, lab, our lab technicians who are working night and day, that God may bless them and that God may give results to their efforts. We pray too for our leaders. Pray that our leaders may realize that we have one common enemy. This is not time to focus on the distractions. The devil wants us to look at each other and see what we are not doing, what one person, and blame ourselves. That our leaders may not be caught up in self-blame or in blame sharing at this time. That we are all focused on this one enemy and see how best we can eliminate this virus from our world. So I'd like you to join in that prayer. And finally, I want to pray for all of you. That whatever you're watching, you're watching and participating in this Mass, that you may feel the peace of God that knows no bounds. That you may feel the presence of God that calms all anxieties. So I'd like us to start this Mass with hearts lifted to God in prayer. Our opening hymn this, this afternoon will be City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God, may our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we are gathered here in this place. We gathered here together. Believe it or not, we may be separated by distance, but each time we gather like this, God is present with us in this virtual space. And there's nothing that threatens the devil more than the fact that God's children are gathered together around our God. We are gathered around Jesus who will be here with us and is here with us right now. And we pray that wherever you are, maybe alone right now, you may feel that community of God's children and the power that flows from that communion. So this Mass is going to be offered with the intentions we laid out at the beginning of this Mass. And if you have any other intentions at this time, I'm going to give you 30 seconds where we can go and bring all of that. Bring all of that and let us put all of those intentions at the altar, at the foot of this altar of God. Now to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the healing and the health of the world. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the hope and the dream of the world. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light that shines and the sun of justice. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance. And in your kindness, grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. We lift our hearts, O God, and our voices for all of your children, wherever they are right now, who are beginning to sink into discouragement anxiety excessive anxiety and even negativity oh god we pray that your spirit may speak some calm and keep your hearts at peace in you we ask this through christ our lord amen our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet daniel king nebuchadnezzar said is it true Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up. Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments, otherwise you shall be instantly cast into the wild hot furnace and who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar there is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter if our God whom we serve can save us from the white hot furnace and from your hands O King may he save us but even if he will not, know this, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you have set for us. The king's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual 
and had some of the strongest men in the army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the, hot, the white hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered, but he replied, I see four men, unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any God except their own God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above forever. All blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all else forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your, your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the thr throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praise and exalt, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the household forever, but the son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I'm here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, um, as I said at the beginning of this Mass, I am constantly engaging People who either write to me, talk to me, call
call me and I, I sense a feeling of an escalation of anxiety and it's reasonable to be because when you see these numbers constantly stacking up in, in spite of all the efforts it is natural you know, for our anxieties to grow, for discouragement to set in, for, you know, the worst of us to begin to surface. But I also understand that the devil can exploit all of those things to use them against us. And so why I'm, say I'm saying this because it's important for us to know our enemy and understand the workings of our enemy. And see how best we can stand up, you know, and not allow ourselves to be exploited by our end by this enemy. So it's important that we recognize if you are beginning to feel discouraged, talk to someone. Speak to someone. Because our feeling of discouragement is saying something. Yes, I'm seeing something, I'm hearing something. Now, maybe what you're hearing is true and what you're seeing is true. But could there be some other truth that you are not hearing? Remember, when God appeared at the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve had sinned, he said to them, he asked them a question, who has been talking to you? Who told you this? You've been hearing someone else. You've not been listening to me. So who has been speaking to you? God knew immediately that Adam had been listening to some other voice that was bringing all the wrong vibes. So there are times where what we're hearing and what we're seeing and what we're perceiving could work on us and help and make us begin to think the way the enemy wants us to think and act the way the enemy wants us to act. It is called exploitation. It's physical, it can be moral, it can be spiritual. It can be emotional. So the devil can exploit our emotional vulnerabilities, our anxieties, and use them against us. So it's important, if you're beginning to feel all of these things, that's time to want to talk to someone else and not just constantly listen to what is going on in yourself. However, this, more, this afternoon, I want us to reflect on what is happening here in the first reading. Now realize we have this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now these were three young men who trusted in God, believed in God, knew that God could do all things for them. They believed it. And that's why they refused. Now the devil had offered, created this, this um, temptation for them with a penalty of death. So either you buy into what I'm offering you, or the option is death. And, and these three guys were willing to face death and not sell away their birthright, sell away their faith. Just, you know, like collapsed before this mortal danger that they were facing. I, I, I like the response that they gave to the king. They said, there is no need for us to defend ourselves before you on this matter. We, we are not, this is not our battle. This is not our fight. <laughs> we have won. Who is going to do this fight for us? So we are not going to fight you. You can do whatever you want. But we know who will make this fight for us if he chooses to. And this is what they said. They said, there is no need to defend ourselves before you on this matter. If our God whom we serve can save us from this danger, this mortal danger. So be it. If he chooses to, to save us, so be it. But even if he decides not to save us, we are not going to bow down to you. We will not do that. We are not going to bow down to fear, bow down to this blackmail, bow down to anything you are offering us. We will not take that bait. We will not do it. Nothing will force us to give up what our treasured faith in our God. They didn't do it. Now, there's a chance right now that based on where the level 
of the world's anxiety is we are also caught up and are spinning in that anxiety and we're beginning to make these kinds of negotiations with our brains you know what do i believe what's my faith like how is this helping me and all of that is what the devil is secreting this whole scenario of scare and fear and then slowly will begin to make suggestions to us easy ways out but i hope like these three guys you able to stand your ground you able to stand your ground because when our lives are in mortal risks or danger the tendency almost always is to give in to whatever offers itself but I encourage you, this is a time to stand your ground, knowing whose you are, whose you belong. You are God's children. And scripture tells us when these three guys refused to do what the devil was offering them, they refused to bow to, do, to, to despair, to fear, to anything else that the devil offered them, to negativity, to a sense of a feeling that God has abandoned us, doesn't care about us. They did not do that. The king had an option and he wanted to follow through with whatever he had planned. He decided he was going to cast them into that very fiery furnace. It was burning hot. These guys were willing to do that. They, decided, they agreed. They were bound and cast into those flames. Now realize, why, was, why did God have to wait until they were in this, those flames before he sent an angel. It agrees with what Jesus said. Sometimes God allows all of this to manifest his glory to the unbeliever, to the one who is doubting, to the one who refuses to embrace God until he has signs and evidence. And maybe you will be that evidence in this, in this encounter, in this experience. Because of your faith, you can manifest what it feels like to know that you are in God's side, you are on God's side, and God is on your side, in spite of how fast and how ravaging this beast is, that there is no fear in your heart because you know who is above you, who is beneath you, who is around you. It is the God who created heaven on earth. And scripture tells us when these guys were in the fire, suddenly. There was a fourth person in the fire. Now you may not see it. You may not know it. In your house right now. In your life right now. Wherever you are right now. There is a fourth person in that home. There is another person in that home. That your eyes may not see. But is present there. That is the son of God. This is what the Bible said. Said when Nebuchadnezzar saw this. Word, I have three guys inside. I can now see four. Yes, because the son of man, his name is Emmanuel, says, I will be with you forever. I will be with you. He is there with you right now. And I hope you can feel his presence. And with that feeling and that faith that you can dispel your own anxieties, your fears, your doubts, your discouragement, your negativity, that you can listen to him. R remember what the Bible said on the mountain of the transfiguration. Says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. I hope we're able to listen to him rather than listen to the enemy who is inspiring fear, inspiring negativity, discouragement, and everything that is wrong about us or in us or about this disease. This disease can offer us an opportunity to witness and to testify to the greatness of our God in our lives. I pray this text may inspire us to change our calculation as we face this beast, knowing that we have a great God behind us. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. God bless you. Let us now pray. Most gracious God, we just want to thank you today. Yes, we are anxious. Yes, the world is anxious and we are impacted by that anxiety, even though you remind us that we are in the world, but not of the world. Yet because we are flesh and blood and can see and can hear, yet we get impacted, oh God, 
by all of the vibes, especially the scary news that we watch and see every day. It is real. But we also want to be inspired by your word, knowing that we're not alone in this fight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your children. Pray especially for those who are so seriously sick, oh God. It does appear that the devil is winning, even though we know that the devil could never win a fight with you. We're asking you, oh God, that your children may feel your presence right now, that they may respond to it and be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our doctors. We pray for our nurses. We pray for those who have to double shifts every day. Some have not, are not able to even go back home to get, to get one hour of rest. Dear God, we ask that you may renew their strength every day. We ask that you may calm their anxieties every day. We ask that you may keep them focused in their job every day. That they may feel the blessing from you every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders. We pray that our leaders may not succumb to the destruction offered at this time by the enemy. Instead of fighting against each other, instead of bickering over little matters, that we may focus on how best we can come together and establish policies that will help us fight this beast. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I offer this mass, I offer these prayers at this time for everyone out there who is watching. That God who anticipates our needs may anticipate your needs. May God anticipate those fears that you are, in, you, are, you are harboring right now. And may God find an answer to calm your nerves. We pray to the Lord. We end by asking our Blessed Mother's intercession as we say the Hail Holy Queen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives are our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry for by the children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O Clement, so lovely, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Blessed are thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings, which we have given to be offered to the honor of your name and grant that they may become remedies for our healing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, for through the the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints 
we to give you thanks as in exaltation we are plain. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have succumbed to this virus, O God. May they find rest on the other side with you. Remember all those who are so sick at this time. May they find healing from you. Remember those who are so scared at this time. May they find courage and strength in you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus. Be with you all. Dear friends, wherever you are, may the peace of God be with you in your heart, be with you in your home, and may the peace of God speak calm at this moment of great anxiety and fear. Amen. From me to you, peace.
Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. More, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now we lift our hearts to God and invite Jesus in his Eucharist to bless us by his presence, to nourish us by his spirit, and to fill us with his grace. Most blessed Lord, what an amazing God you are. You are ever present with your people, even when they cannot receive you physically. As they lift their hearts up to you, O God, and seek spiritual communion with you, may they feel the blessedness and the blessings from this Eucharist in their lives, in their homes, with their families, and with everything they care about, O oh God. May you be around, may you be about, may you be beneath, may you be above them to bless and fill their lives. Amen. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have celebrated and received bring us heavenly medicine, O Lord, that they may purge all our sins from our hearts, heal our disease, expel our fears, and strengthen us with your eternal protection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, um, I will be sending a link on my Facebook page. I, I plan for us to begin to talk about what is going on in our lives. I will be giving some um, live, uh, live streaming some, uh, some skills and strategies on how to manage a moment like this. This is unprecedented. No one has ever experienced something like this, at least in our lifetime and in anyone's lifetime. So we need to come up with better ways of supporting each other. So um, you're going to see a link. Um, if you go there and download an app or register and follow through with um, the instructions that are there, you're able to connect um, to those um, live stream uh, lectures and 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 talks so i will be doing that um in a short in a short while so i encourage you uh, only 25 persons can um share their webcam at a time but about 250 other persons can also call in and be part of this, this discussion i plan for us to also use it and do our bible study our prayer gatherings like i said there's nothing the devil fears more and God's people gathered together. The scripture has, has a word for that. It says, where two or three gather together, 
God is there and that scares the hell out of the devil. So we would not allow this disease to isolate us. Yes, we need to keep safe distance, but social distance is not the same thing as social isolation. We will not be isolated. We will continue to gather in ways that are possible. And in our gathering, call the blessings and the graces and the mercy of the Almighty God. So I encourage you, when you see that on my Facebook page, you go there and then subscribe and sign up. So always, I will always want to fight with you until we overcome. God loves you and God loves you very much. And I love you very much too from my heart to all of you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the world. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing the song, sing, I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour. Most great, it shows more. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. Oh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art night. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come.